stand. In our Catholic traditions, a funeral mass can begin as if in the doorway. Today, so that those who may join us from home through live stream can participate, we'll begin in the center aisle. In gratitude for the gift of life given to God's servant, Terry Alvino, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. May the grace and peace of our risen Lord be with each of you. As I mentioned in our Catholic traditions, a funeral mass can begin as if in the doorway. The doors then are symbolic, a reminder, how we must all pass through the doorway of death into the kingdom of heaven. How often Terry and his family passed safely through those doors. The promise of safe passage is given in our baptism as a child of God, where we hear those words, huh? 
The one who lives and believes will never die. So a funeral mass begins by calling to mind the sacred symbols of baptism. In the waters of baptism, Terry died with Christ and rose to new life. May the Lord now welcome him to eternal life. In baptism, we are clothed in white, clothed in Christ. The white robe of baptism at the beginning of life on earth becomes the funeral pall, the robe of heavenly glory. As always, we follow the cross of Christ. to give us these special gifts so dear to us, the gift of life, the gift of family, and the gift of faith. Wonderful to have Monsignor Leach with us today. Uh, Monsignor visited Terry quite often at the uh, Sightman Center. And a special welcome also for Father Samuel. Father Samuel often visited <laughs> Terry at his home. Uh, I love Terry, and uh, I know and I heard today he loved me, so. <laughs> Good old Terry. And Terry and Judy treasured members of our parish since 1984. And I heard where you said, what well, was the greatest thing, the greatest experience moving here? See, our great friends, see, the graduates, the kids of our grade school. I enjoyed looking at your eighth grade graduation photos, uh, Elizabeth. T. Scott. Uh, Terry was one of 11, Judy one of nine. Thank you, Lord, for family. I was just with my family. See, I love my family. What a great gift. And a parish family that you know, a parish family, you know, cares about the members of the parish. So walking, listening to as I came in, so many of our parish parishioners are here. People who've even moved away are here. Uh, everybody loved Terry and Judy and the family. And so we give thanks. In our Catholic traditions, when we pray, now we pray in two ways. First, we pray for Terry, that he will rest in peace, enjoy his eternal reward. Remember, in our Catholic traditions, when we die, if we need a further preparation, a purgation, a purification, the prayers of the living help. That's one thing more we can do. And that's our ancient noble practice of praying for 
having masses offered for our deceased loved ones. And then we pray for one another, especially Judy and the family. Whatever you need, may the Lord provide. Let us pray. God, our Father, you are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints. Give, we pray, to your servant, Terry Alvino, for whom today we perform the sacred rites of Christian burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection and reward, free from the bonds of mortality, he may come before your face and in the beatific vision see and know the splendor of God. Pour out your blessings of comfort, consolation, and peace upon his family and friends who mourn his passing. God, our Father, you have set a limit to this present life so as to open up entrance into eternity. We humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy, you may command the name of your servant, Terry Alvino, to be inscribed in the book of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was through an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if in the eyes of men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Shepherd me, oh 
guide beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. A reading from Timothy. <coughs> I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching, for the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires and insatiable curiosity will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myths. But you, be self-possessed in all circumstances, put up with hardship, perform the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, for I am already being poured out like a libation and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. And Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, then one day I will come back and take you with me, so that where I am, you also may be. And you know the way that leads where I go. Thomas spoke up and said, Master, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Follow me. For no one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. Lord. Again, a privilege and honor for me to lead our prayers. So on behalf of Monsignor Leach, Father Samuel, and all in our parish family, and many of them are here present, uh, a sincere sympathy and prayerful support. Uh, we've been praying. In fact, well, how many times we visited, you know, over the years. And he was here after he had to quit work because of illness. Uh, every day, 6.30 Mass, right here. So our sympathy and prayerful support to Judy and the family. And of course, his many, many friends. I always like to highlight that little gesture of the gospel just in case anyone is less familiar, in our Catholic traditions, when we stand for the gospel, we bless ourselves, mark ourselves with a small cross on the forehead, begins in baptism, on the forehead, over the lips, over the heart. We do it in silence, but there's a prayer that goes with that. And so that is my, that's our prayer for uh, Judy, uh, the children, spouses, all the grandchildren, siblings, family and friends. Huh? May the Lord be on your mind, on your lips, in your heart. For when the Lord is on our minds, on our lips, in our heart, then we never face any difficulties or challenges alone. That God is with us. Uh, Emmanuel, uh, the Advent wreath. And the word of Advent, Emmanuel, I am with you always. So may the Lord be on your mind, on your lips, in your heart. On the journey of life, I knew it began at St. Mary Magdalene, because he loved talking about the parish, and the bowling alleys, and the, you know, everything. Wow, good old St. Mary Magdalene. Well, I grew up in St. Boniface, so I'm a South City guy. And of course, he went to St. Mary's High School. Many friends are here. And he coached I, I, people. Oh, he coached my kids here. You know, wow. Growing up. And I love this part of the story. They met at a bowling alley. <laughs> Maybe not at St. Well, yeah, Magdalen had a bowling alley. Boniface had a bowling alley. As we said in those days, huh, it was the, the center of life. St. Mary Magdalene. So they got married April 10th, 1981, so 40 years together. Of course, it's very hard to say goodbye. I remember my mom when my dad died, so we're all feeling for you. And then, he, yeah, he worked at AT&T over 30 years, and then as his health problems developed, well, 6.30 mass right here. And I love how you said that. Yeah, the greatest experience coming to this parish. I think it was 1984. Great friends, many of them are here. The parish, a greatest gift. Well, that's something. Thank you, Father Shear, and the, the, those who started the parish over the years. Huh? What a gift. And of course, then the last, uh, well, year or two, I know the family was appreciative of Scott, you know, kind of being there. I always, 
I think of Simon of Cyrene. Remember, uh, Jesus needed help carrying the cross because the cross got very heavy and Jesus would stumble and fall. And good thing Simon of Cyrene helped him carry the cross. So, of course, thank you, Scott, and everyone. So I'd come by. There were always siblings there. And, and we can all be like a Simon of Cyrene now, next month, next year, helping the family carry the cross. They're not meant to be carried alone. Other oh, readings are perfect. You know, we went over some, and this first reading... The soul in the hands of God. Because I can imagine maybe the grandchildren, grandpa, oh yeah, in the, in the casket, the greatest grandpa. And where's grandpa? In the hands of God, no torment now touches him. His sufferings are over. He is at peace. For Terry... Sickness, dementia, huh? that's a very good place to be now. While passing from your loving arms into the loving arms of God our Father, that's a very good place to be. Where's Terry? See? His sufferings are over. He's at peace. I think I mentioned in the Bible, death is described as a falling asleep. Kind of, that's how the Bible describes death. We're not afraid to fall asleep. We wake up. The death of falling asleep, and you wake up in the arms of God our Father. The pro- and Jesus promised that, see? So it's a beautiful reading. Uh, in the view of the foolish, the eyes of faith... Well, it's easy to lose. You know, as we get older, we can't see as well. Cataracts, things start to get in the way. And you can't see too well anymore. See? In the view of the foolish, well, death is terrible. It's the end. They are no more. Utter destruction. It's awful. Then it's like the writer puts the glasses back on. But those who see... Those who trust in the Lord shall understand truth. The faithful live forever with God in love. Yeah. Where's Terry? Second reading, yeah, oh, Timothy just sort of jumped out, huh? I fought the good fight. I've run the race. I'm wearing down. I've kept the faith. And now a merited crown awaits me. St. Paul, I think he was in prison writing this. He, his, he knew the end was coming. Oh, he knew the ancient Greeks and their love of the Olympics. And if you won the Olympics, you know, you got the emperor's crown. You were the emperor for the day. What a great honor. See? St. Paul, oh, there's a better crown. The crown of righteousness. The crown, a child of God. The crown, baptism, receiving holy communion. See? Living the sacrament of holy matrimony. A man of faith. See? The crown of glory. That awaits him. See? Well, it awaits all of us. That's why these readings are are meant to inspire the living. And then, of course, the gospel. Yeah, we we joke when I, well, one of 11, one of nine, did you have your own room? No. (laughs) Neither did I. I said that, well, smaller families today, bigger homes. My grade schoolers were here. I said, who has their own room? All the hands went up. I said, turn around, ask the adults in the back. (laughs) 
Well, see, Jesus knew human nature, huh? What's heaven like? A big mansion. There's a room for you. You got your own room. If there were not, would I have told you this? Boy, take that phrase with you. Put it on your refrigerator. If there were not, would I have told you this? One day I will come back and take you with me. The day of our death. So where I am, you will be. Say, where's Terry? And you know the way. That's a disciple word. Huh? The way. The way of the Lord. It's the way of the cross. You know? No matter how much you believe, how often you go to communion, how much you pray, eh, you can't escape life. Crosses. Eh? But you know the way. Hmm? The way of the Lord. The way of trust. The way of hope. Thomas Good old Thomas. I think he speaks up like on behalf of the human race. What are you talking? We can't see this. Where are you going? How are we supposed to know the way? Well, he doesn't have his glasses on. See, the eyes of faith. So Jesus, huh? Oh, follow me. See, wow. Follow me. Terry did. That's what we hope to do. Where's Terry? The great crown of glory. We pray, remember. If you need a further preparation, a purgation, a purification, the prayers of the living help. For one day, we hope to follow. We stand for our petitions. You can move the microphone. For Papa, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Papa, who received the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. For the Lord said, the one who eats this bread will live forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, especially Grandma Jo, Joan, and Grandpa Jack Keller, Dolores, Pietro, Tom, and Pete Alvino, Katie Campanella, Alex, Jerry, and Christopher Keller, Pat McVeigh, and Katie Stevenson. May they be at peace in the arms of Jesus and now welcome Papa into God's heavenly home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear For the family and friends of Papa, that they may be given hope and peace, treasuring the memories they have of him and comforted in their grief by the Lord Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here today in loving memory of our Papa, help us, Lord, to be faithful to you so that we may someday be united with you in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all family members and friends who always offered support and care for our Papa, that they may be rewarded with peace and known our deep gratitude for their help, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who will miss Uncle Terry, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from our grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the caregivers, especially Grace and Yolanda at Pathways Hospice, who continually showed great care and compassion for Terry, that they may be nourished daily with strength, courage, grace, and renewal, as they continue to serve. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace, healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ. Grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as our gifts of bread and wine are presented. Please join in singing number 437, 437 on Eagle's Wings. gifts of ourselves, we stand and pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your name, and the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Terry, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Father Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful children, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. So with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, respecting with the greatest blessing the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with the apostles and the glorious martyrs and all the saints, with all the saints in whose promise we maintain our presence with relying and an unholy help. May this sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Terry, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform a lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There. We hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, 
we shall become like you for all the ages. Praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Now we stand and pray together as children of one family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now we offer a sign of peace to one another. you now to either kneel or sit. We will have three Holy Communion stations, the center aisle and on each side. Anyone not receiving Holy Communion may come forward for a blessing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not worthy. Almost. May the body of Christ nourish us for life now and forever. Amen. I invite our communion minister, please come forward.
Our communion hymn is number 337, 337. Take my heart, O oh Lord, take my hopes and dreams, take my mind with all its plans and schemes, give me nothing more than your love and grace, these alone, O oh God, are enough for me. My thoughts, O oh Lord, and my memory. Take my tears, my joys, my liberty. Give me nothing more than your love and grace. These alone, O oh God, are enough for me. I 
surrendered, Lord, all I have and hold. I return to you your gifts untold. Give me nothing more than your love and grace. These alone, O oh God, are enough for me. When the darkness falls on my final days, take the very breath that sang your praise. Give me nothing more than your love and grace. These alone, O oh God, are enough for me. And now some family words of love and remembrance. Hello. For those who may not know, I'm Elizabeth, and that's T, and this is Scotty. First, we want to express our heartfelt gratitude to all of you. We have been blessed with so much love and support for so long. We would be lost without our family and friends who have been unconditional in their love. The continuous care so many of you provided to our dad, along with Pathways Hospice, in his final months, meant that he was surrounded by love and attention until the very end. My mom also asked that I extend her deep gratitude for her coworkers that supported her unconditionally these past 12 years. My parents were parishioners at St. Margaret Mary for over 35 years. The people my parents met here grew into friendships of the rarest types, the ones that <coughs> stood the test of time. These friends are like family to us now. St. Margaret Mary is a place where our dad became my soccer coach, a men's softball league legend, and helped out with, sport, with our sports as much as his job allowed. After his cancer diagnosis and treatment, he found strength in faith, becoming a regular at daily 6.30 mass, always joining a crew of other regulars at McDonald's afterward. We would like to extend our appreciation to St. Margaret Mary. We will always have a special place in our hearts for the memories and the lifelong friendships that were formed here. My dad was born December 27, 1955, to Dolores and Pietro. He was the sixth of 11 children. He grew up in South St. Louis, in St. Mary Meglin Parish, in a home on Bancroft that in his final months was the most highly requested place he wanted to go visit. He was sweet, funny, and an animal lover, so it would make sense that he would eventually marry my mom. <laughs> he was adored by both his older and younger siblings, known to keep a close eye on the twins especially, given their reputation for being a bit mischievous. He graduated from St. Mary's High School tried college, worked at UPS, and eventually landed a job at Southwestern Bell. His work ethic started early and never waned. Working hard and helping his mom take care of his younger siblings was something that came naturally. He was always willing to take the overtime and never complained. He could be reached by his beloved beeper if you needed him. We would be remiss if we didn't mention the perks of his job as, um, as well. Many of you know the Terry towels and other goodies. Just always remember you didn't get them from him. <laughs> My dad made lifelong friends at Southwestern Bell and too many memories and crazy customer stories, including being attacked by a dog, to share right now. One fateful night, a little over 40 years ago, he met a fellow Southwestern Bell employee, Judy. 
at a bowling alley, which for some reason didn't translate to matching bowling balls in league night. <laughs> they married on April 10th, 1981. There was a mutual adoration between my dad and his in-laws, Jack and Joan Keller. My mom's siblings and spouses always loved my dad as well. The newlyweds moved into a flat on Alberta Street in South City, welcoming their first and favorite <laughs> child, me. T was born a couple years later, as well as a new home on Milburn Acres Court. The baby of the family, Scotty, was born, completing the family. Our parents' marriage was imperfect, but lasted. They truly loved each other through sickness and health, for better or worse. It should be noted that in the light stages of my dad's disease, he had moments where he loved to spread wild rumors, especially involving my mom. She asked that I take this opportunity to clarify <laughs> that none of these rumors were true. <laughs> Having him as our dad, we, will always, we always knew we were loved. He was a dedicated family man. He worked the way he did to provide a life for us that was filled with things he wanted us to experience. Things like vacations with the Nibriches, sports clubs, Catholic educations, and cars some of which we would have preferred he not provide. <laughs> Growing up, oftentimes he would leave early for work, but would make sure toothpaste was on the toothbrushes and warm washcloths out for our faces. He did this well past the age that was actually acceptable. <laughs> T mentioned he may have been doing this for Scotty up until a few months ago. He would make the boys his famous egg sandwiches that he thought were the most amazing things ever. He would take the boys fishing, which would always end with T crying, and loved to drive around and look for deer with Scotty. He got so much joy from watching us play sports, especially T's run as a professional soccer player and Scotty's impressive soccer career at Central Methodist. Nearly 15 years ago, he walked me down the aisle to my husband Scott. They formed a hilarious, genuine relationship, and loved, he loved him like a son. Twelve years ago, his life changed forever. He had a seizure after an evening at one of their favorite outings, a botanical garden summer concert. He was diagnosed with large B-cell lymphoma, brain surgery, chemo, radiation to the brain, and eventually a stem, a stem cell transplant followed. His survival was nothing short of a miracle, a second chance at life. He would have to retire from a job he worked at for 30 plus years. All he knew was work, so this was the silver lining. He got the chance to do things like volunteer, attend mass daily, and even babysit my Annie. His grandkids, Johnny, Annie, Mia, Reese, and Adam, would become his focus and real joy. No doubt his desire to live was strengthened by these five. Before I wrap this up, because our dad was never a fan of sitting for very long, I need to give a hard-earned, well-deserved, huge thank you to you, Scotty. Scotty has been working home since COVID, so he was home with my dad nearly every day, all day. He has been his caretaker and my dad's best friend. They drove each other nuts, but loved one another. Scotty and my mom endured the cruelest side effects of my dad's illness. They loved him still. My dad's earthly ab absence will be felt most by my mom and Scotty. Scotty, just know how grateful all of us are for you. What you did for dad didn't go unnoticed. We know, and most importantly, he knew. In closing, our dad was the guy who was wearing shorts year-round. He never slept in. He was witty. He loved to tell my mom to tell me to fix my eyebrows. <laughs> and loved to tell his cancer story. He loved supervise and a good deal on things he did not need. He collected coolers. Well, he collected everything. He loved music, especially George Harrison. 
He filled up gas tanks well before it was needed, always offered to get you something to drink, and told you to take your shoes off before coming in the house. He loved sweets after cancer. He used phrases like lollygagging and don't get your dabber down. He loved his role as the unofficial activities coordinator, always being the first to try to get a game going at family parties. He stayed active, walking and biking, until that was no longer physically possible. He was affectionately referred to as Red Dog and Red, compliments of his beautiful red hair. If he liked you, he loved you and was loyal. He would ask about you and really want to know. He was one of a kind through sickness and health, better and worse. He will be missed always. He will be loved forever. Thank you. Well said. Let us pray. God, our Father, your Son, Jesus, left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey. Mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother in faith may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Trusting in the Lord, we have prayed together for God's servant, Terry. Now we come to this last farewell. There is sadness in the party. But we take comfort in the hope and joy that one day we will see him again and enjoy his love. Although we leave church today in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the peace and joy of his kingdom. So we comfort and console one another with our faith in Jesus Christ. <laughs> sacred symbol. Our prayers rise like incense. 
the soul returns to the loving arms of God our Father. The incense is a symbol of the profound respect we have for the human body, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the soul. And the incense is a symbol of good deeds. That's why I used a lot of it. His many good deeds. The scriptures do say, blessed are those who die in the Lord, for their good deeds go with them. Into your hands, God our Father, we commend your servant Terry. In the sure and certain hope that together with all who died in Christ, he will be raised up on the last day. We thank you for the blessings you poured out upon him <coughs> and his family and friends throughout his life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith till we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother in faith forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the angels lead you into paradise and may the martyrs come now to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Our funeral mass will conclude at the cemetery with the final prayers and blessings there. Then you are all invited for continued fellowship and lunch at Maggie O'Brien's South. So now in peace, we take our brother in faith to his place of rest. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy Amazing grace, my chain.
You are. 